I'm out here filling up buckets and watering my sweet potatoes um, from a faucet in the house that kind of drains this way. Well, it's a storage building, not necessarily the house, but it drains into the garden area. Um, and I don't have a lot going on yet. We've only been here for a couple months. And, you know, the first couple months we focused on, um, well, actually just about the first month or so, we focused on um, getting everything inside of the house taken care of. Um, and then I came out and I threw out these sweet potatoes because I've never had trouble growing sweet potatoes. And if I'm going to have any greens growing in the heat of summer, you know, sweet potatoes are easy ones to go with. And so I just threw them out here, um, literally just went to the grocery store, bought Asian sweet potatoes and regular sweet potatoes, purple, pinks, all kinds of sweet potatoes, and just threw them in the garden uh, or threw them down here. <laughs> and just was like okay at least i'll have some vines growing i'll be able to throw some greens and some eggs or you know into soups or whatever it is that i'm putting together just be able to throw something green in there um because right now nothing is growing um and then i also put a couple um what are they called sweet not sweet potatoes so i have the sweet potatoes and then black eyed peas i threw those down because those are simple easy keepers for this Texas heat. Um, and yeah, they're not doing so hot and they haven't this whole time. It's been very difficult. I've only been able to get out greens twice this, this whole time. And you know, it kind of breaks my heart a little bit because I've never had trouble gardening really. Um, but I know that it's all going to come together. I know it's going to be okay. Um, I haven't really shown anybody around too much um, and we don't have a whole lot going on right now I'm not ready to show you know the chicken space or the rabbit space or the duck space because the duck space isn't ready yet and they're in with the rabbits but here's my goats um, and we have three mamas in here there's one right up under here. I haven't had any trouble keeping them in this teeny tiny pen. Um, but we let them out to graze every day. Um, take them out on a dog lead with a 50 foot wire. And we let them graze. And we just rotate them around so that they have plenty of space to you know, forage and get what they need. Um, so... <laughs> Let me show you how terrible the garden's been this year. Um, this is a sunflower. Sunflowers, they grow everywhere. They grow like a weed, right? Okay, it's been in the ground for months and nothing. Nothing at all. Like, you know, there's a teeny tiny bud showing up in there, but it's literally so tiny. So, what I found from one of my neighbors is that this was a hay field for a long 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 time even before they got here and they've been here for a long time um, and these are black eyed peas and they're actually just now starting to vine out um, and they've been in the ground for two months they're just starting to vine out um, but <laughs> this is this is what I'm dealing with there's just I couldn't do any real prep before starting and so I tried to put things in the ground that are fighters they're not needing to be coddled or babied you know they'll just fight their way through it um, and so here is a squash plant and I've gotten zero squash from any of the squash plants that I have um, and here's another sunflower these are supposed to be those really really big ones that you can harvest the seeds from um, oh, look at this gorgeous, uh, you, he jumped off, but it was a huge grasshopper, um, gold. It's beautiful. So I, I don't have any issues with bugs. I don't care too much about whether they decide to stay and hang out or whether they feel like they need to do something else because eventually the birds will show up and they'll handle the situation. So I'm not too concerned, but the birds do have to come to know that I'm here so and that I'm growing things and that 
you know, the bugs are attracted to said things that I'm growing. Um, and so, yeah, it's going to take a little time to get there. Um, this little plot has sweet potatoes and black eyed peas in it also, but you can see tons of goat weed, um, pasture grasses, all kinds of things. Um, I, I'm not saying pasture grasses in a way of, or even goat weed as like, oh, these weeds, oh my gosh, they're so terrible. Um, I wish they would go away. No, it's just, it's not the ideal situation, but at the same time, biodiversity is good. So if it's going to allow some things to grow right now, but it's going to keep the soil looking okay, then I think I'm okay with it. But everywhere where you pull a mower, the ground just turns into like this desolate, <laughs> um, just dead material. This is, I did nothing here but mow the lawn. Um, and I just mowed around some of the seeds that I threw in. Um, but this is, this is what happens. And all of this is vole mounds. They're everywhere. And I've never worked with voles before. Like, but there's vole holes everywhere, everywhere, everywhere. Um, as you're walking, you can just feel them under your feet where they've been, you know, burrowing the night before. And I had an issue. This was full of, um, squash plants and, I came out a couple of nights um, because one by one I kept finding um, the stem of the plant just chewed off and the plant not even eaten, just the stem chewed off. And I'm searching online trying to figure out what damages plants like that um, because it didn't touch the leaves. It's not touching anything other than just one little part where the stem meets the ground. And of course it's my voles that are doing that, which tells me that they're hungry and they need something to eat. And so because I'm sure that that's not their absolute favorite food is, you know, the, um, the stem ends of my plants. Absolutely not. Here's an okra plant. It's the only one that looks really decent, um, short because there's no fertility here, you know, because whenever you're mowing hay, you, you take it away and you sell it. And so nothing goes back onto the ground. Um, and so you can't expect that much fertility stayed here. There's my friends again. They're just everywhere. Everywhere, everywhere. Um, so, and here's some milkweed. And that just shows up. Um, I just saw it in lots of different places. You can see on this, this little spot where the kids hang out. Um, there's, there's lots of milkweed. So much milkweed. Um, and so I was looking for the monarch butterflies and, you know, I'm just, I'm just excited about being here. So I'm just checking out everything. Um, this is the majority of what, what my plants look like right here. They're just sad little guys, but I've been doing this for so long that like, I know that this is a very, very unusual thing for me with basic management, you know, just very, very basic management of just, you know, providing water and putting down some rabbit poop in order to make sure that there's a little fertility. Um, but this needs a lot more than what I thought it was going to need. <laughs> so cue some of the other videos or shorts that I've created and I'm going to show you what I'm doing. Um, we called arborists and um, just beyond this pond um we i don't know if you can see it over there i'll walk over there in just a minute but we um mowed a little bit and then had arborists come and drop off some chips um we've been clearing this out too and it's been it's been a battle but we're gonna leave everything on the outside for the frogs and the fish to lay their eggs and for the minnows to be able to get away from the big fish because there are fish in here and there's crawfish so we're going to leave this area just like we found it for the most part um, just so that they have the habitat that they like while we still have the recreational use just being able to have my children be able to fish here um, the water has gone down significantly so where this goat weed is is where the water was when we first got here it's gone down that far and so I was able to get in there and just kind of mow all of this down 
um, after doing a lot of manual removal of some of this uh, alligator weed and I think it's called um, my daughter told me what it was something like it reminded me of um, primrose but not quite um, but she told me what it was because there's lots of new plants here that I haven't seen before weeds that I haven't seen before or dealt with before because it's a new location and so I'm consistently on Google and other apps trying to figure out you know what's here and what doesn't need to be disturbed and what can be disturbed because it's you know aggressive and so I'm able to kind of push it back just a little bit um, and still keep the biodiversity on the property there's lots of frogs lots of different kinds of frogs um, and salamanders not salamanders what are they called skinks um, and so I don't want to mess with them I don't want them to um, to have to find somewhere else to go or to die off just because I moved in um, this was kind of untouched for a couple years um, the property owner that was here before us um, wasn't mowing or anything just right around the house and that's it and so um, everything was able to kind of move back in and I don't want to screw it up so I'm gonna leave it that way like we see cranes in the afternoon and uh, or in the early morning and then in the late afternoon and then we also see some like wild ducks come around but really funny looking ones I'm gonna have to I think it was called a um, a black bellied duck and it was a really funny color and it was so beautiful to me um, but this is what we were working on last night we were in the pond trying to create a run for the ducks um, it was not fun and it was unsuccessful but we're working on it and we're gonna get this taken care of so right here um, this goes down probably about a foot before it hits the ground and then it's thick mud and so the, these sticks are easily I would say about eight feet but they stand you know shorter than me and I'm only five foot um, and so they've gone down a lot and they're still not stable because the soil is just so um, like I don't know thick goopy sticky it's clay so you know it's not it's not gonna stay in place like it should when it's wet um, but the ones up here they do and there's literally no way to this turns into rocks once you get to it um, it dries a little bit but it's just rock and so because it's clay and so my son had so much fun he was building with that um, last night while we were working and this is the little oasis that he created um, it's a wonderful thing um, this is where our ducks are going to sleep and all I did was I picked some of these native grasses that were already here and I cut some of them back a little bit because I wanted to make sure that there weren't snakes or anything like that but it's going to grow straight back up um, but this is where my ducks will have a little bit of refuge and then we put just a plain canopy over it and it's just an old canopy that we used to use for um, camping so here's this <laughs> um, I'm not quite sure if we're gonna need more than what's here for them but we'll figure it out this is only the second time that I've ever had ducks in my entire life and the first time didn't last long because we were living in Mesquite Texas and um, the city immediately came out and was like you can't have ducks and so I had ducks and a few chickens at the time and it was yeah so they had to go and it was not fun because I had grown so fond of them um, but they had to go and I just kept praying that one day we would have property and I'd be able to give my children the life that I wanted to give them and give them the opportunity to um, really learn about these animals and grow these animal relationships but also learn stewardship um and so yeah we made it <laughs> god is so good he just shows up and does what it is um so this is where the arborists have dropped off 
their wood chips and you can kind of see how deep it is I'm not sure if you can tell on the video but I'll put my leg up here and we'll see if you can see so it's almost to my knee um, and I am a five foot woman so it's it's deep um, and the reason we did it so deep is because of how tough the soil is and so I'm gonna let this area rest and all we're doing is watering it I don't know if you can see the, the sprinkler going over there but I just move the sprinkler around in different places and the birds love it um, and we're just going to kind of keep the area hydrated because it's arborist chips so these were fresh leaves and branches that were chipped and as soon as they get here they get dropped off and I have a sign over there um, I'm sure you just saw that where it just says hey drop it right here and so they drop them right there for me and then um, I immediately come out you know within the the day and I just kind of lay them out and make the mound go down a little bit but you know keep it about a foot I mean a knee length um, in height but try to even everything out because there are a lot of slopes and so I want more of a grade um, in this area except for the hill I'm gonna let the hill stay I just want to still cover it because as soon as you mow like everything is just dead <laughs> um, and so it's and the, the soil you can just see it through everything like it's it, it there's nothing here really there's no um it's not black it's not anything that's really really fertile and so i'm excited about being able to create being able to add to and to watch it develop you can see a little bit of grass coming up through here just barely any just a couple little blades here and there but this is what it looked like before um before we mowed and we didn't even finish mowing i actually had an issue where i overheated and um developed heat sickness and so i was inside you know not being able to hold down water or anything um, and I was just down for the count for a couple days whenever I came out to mow this area. So, yeah, I learned my lesson. I did, because I had worked several days in the sun, um, and I was drinking, but clearly it wasn't enough. So, I will never make that mistake again, God willing, um, <laughs> because that was absolutely terrible. I literally thought I was going to die. So um, I'm grateful that God helped me get through that. And, you know, I'm going to take it as a lesson learned. And I'm going to sit my tail down when it's extremely hot, like today. Um, it's going to be, I think, 105 today. And so, yeah, I'm going to go inside before it gets to that point because I just never want to experience that again. Um, my goats have been here, so they're out here gra um, grazing, and I'm moving them around in different places just so that they can get enough. But yeah, so the gardens are a complete and utter failure this year, but I learned something, so I, I don't care that it's a failure. And we've still gotten a couple, the only thing I've been able to harvest is a few, um, sweet potato leaves and also some uh, black eyed peas from two plants like two black eyed pea plants so really they've been a couple speckles in some casseroles and that's it but I'm grateful for anything that we get so yeah this is it and I'm excited to continue to learn and um, for all of our plans to come through and I'll let you guys know when I'm ready to tour the the rabbit house and everybody else's house um, we dug a about five foot four to five foot um, burrow for the rabbits and then covered it 
so that they had someplace cool to go. Um, and the rabbits that we had separated, you know, because you want to separate the males from the females um, when you're not, especially when they're siblings. And so I had my males in cages and they were absolutely miserable. Um, I took out all the females and they were on grass already and they were miserable. They were having such a hard time in this heat and I was doing everything that I could to keep them cool. Um, and I was just too afraid that, um, that I was going to kill them by keeping them in the cage. And so I put them in with my chickens, with all my, um, future laying hens and they're doing great now, even though I didn't dig them a burrow. Um, just being able to go in the chicken house and cool off, it, they're doing so much better and they're gaining weight again. And it, the only thing that changed was them being on the ground and being able to get their bellies on the soil and dig down just a little bit and lay in the cool soil. That's the only thing that changed and it changed everything for them. Um, I did have a tragedy with one of my li um, litters this year. And I've never seen anything like that before. And I cried like a baby. Um, and I'll tell you guys about it at some point. <laughs> but it's, oh my goodness, it was an absolute tragedy. And it's still a mystery. I have no clue what exactly happened. And so I'll talk about that at a different point. Um, when I have a little more time and I'm not going to cry about it. So... <laughs> Oh, it's definitely past time for me to dump my bucket back onto these sweet potatoes. So just a, a little video, you know, a little walkabout, but there's so much more to show and I can't wait to take you guys along. Thank you.